So this is you know, kind of a view right here of what your Google Calendar looks like. And you can see on the left-hand side under My Calendars, you have this Transactions by Folio Calendar right here. Mm -hmm. So you can color it however you, know, however you want to. You can make it you know, purple, pink, whatever. Uh, but this will literally tell you, you know, where all of your... This is being fed directly from your transaction folders. So everything that you have set up in here automatically goes in. Which gets quite overwhelming, but you can always, you can always, you know, once you share it, you can always, yeah, pull it, you know, pull it out um, or take off some of the things that you don't need or as you complete things, you know, obviously they go away, but. Believe me, because I can see everybody's floor duty calendar, I can see right, the yeah. calendar, the staff calendar, my exactly. calendar, our social pads, so yeah, you have to pick and choose. Yeah, you put that, <laughs> I have them all on. Put that agent training like calendar over there. It's crazy. Can you make different properties, different colors? Right. Like it's all folio, is red, but. No. Mm -hmm. That you can't do. It's, it's only going to take. It's only going to color code. You know, what's coming directly from Folio. You've been using this for a long time. Is there any like? Is there um, anything you learned in the beginning that you should be aware of, or you should you know maybe take um, into the future? No, not no, not really. I mean, I, I would just say that like this is just like everything else is. You, you know, you get out of it what you put into it. Mm -hmm. So if you literally do, you know, call, you know, working on your business instead of in your business, if you actually take the time and work on your business and set aside an hour or two hours, whatever, throughout the course of the week to literally put in some really good resources for your clients, your preferred vendors, mm -hmm. you know, and actually make it robust, I think it does a world of good. Uh, way more than, you know, um, way more than a lot of other things that I've seen. If there's... You know, I'll give you an example of one thing that I don't like about it. Um, but it could also be a good thing. So let's say like you have, um, you have, like Rachel sends out her thing at the end of, you know, once you get your commission check, she sends out your, you know, total transactions. Um, those emails will go in every transaction that you have. That one email, will, a copy of it will go into every single one. So it's not necessarily specific to just that transaction because it's got other transactions listed on it too at the oh, same time it and it's not it's like wait a minute like I have this address but I'm seeing all these other addresses too so you'll see like um, that AdWorks one was a good was a good one that I, I just pulled up um, so why do you feel that's a bad thing well it's it's not necessarily but it, it, it it's not a bad thing for if you are trying to get it into you know, if you're trying to just go for, to see it for this specific transaction, you're going to see that along with four other, you know, four or five other ones or whatever in the same transaction. You see what I'm saying? Because they're all being, they're all being categorized that way. So if I do one, two, three Main Street, yeah. and then I do three, four, five Main Street, when I close three, four, five Main Street, Rachel's going to send me an email that says, this are all your closed transactions. Well, both of those emails are going to go in both of the transactions. So now you talk about 26 okay. transactions. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's got all the, 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 tags, yeah. the tags for them. Well, Not really a huge problem to have. And you can always go back through and scrub things. The good thing about it is once you archive it, it stops. <laughs> once you archive it, it stops. So that's a good thing. As long as you're good at you know, archiving those folders once you're done the transaction, get them out of the inbox and archive them. That it, you know you won't continue to get over and over and over again. Thank you, Cass. I got a scoop. You're this welcome. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a question too. Go ahead. When you get an email, um, all right. So you see how that was assigned to a, a transaction. Yeah. So if you delete that email that's in your inbox, it also deletes it out of that transaction, right? Like, what do you do with the email in your inbox? Okay, so and this is what we were, we were talking about earlier. So when, when you set up Folio, it's not making a second copy of, of the email. It's taking, you know, every email that comes into your inbox is tagged with inbox, right? So you see right here, it says inbox. Right. The only difference is that when... When, you, when it's assigned to a transaction, it gets a second tag on it, okay. okay? Now, when you archive it, the only thing that goes away is the inbox tag. So it comes out of your inbox, 
and it goes into its little, it's, it's in its little folio folder. That's it. It's not like a second copy or a third copy. It's the same email. It's just right. pulling it out of your inbox. But that's only when you archive it. <clears throat> right, when you archive so it. So what do you do with it for the, the net first 30 days of your transaction? What do you do mean? Do you keep it in your inbox the whole time? Or? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you can do really whatever you want with it. To so me, I don't even, I can't even, I can't keep up with it. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't keep up with email. So, eventually, it goes away, but only when you archive it. When you archive for each transaction, yeah, then, then all so, the emails but, there. But, but it doesn't, it doesn't show up in your inbox. It shows up in your folio it's part of your inbox. When it's archived. When it's archived. So, in the beginning, it comes to your inbox, but it'll have a label on it. Right. So exactly. I'm a total freak about not having too many emails in my inbox. Uh, me it too. Drives me crazy. So I yeah. archive everything. You know, sure. I tag a lot of stuff and archive it. So it'll still, it'll come in your inbox. But if, once you you're done with it and you've seen it, you can just click on in, the X on inbox and it'll take it out of your inbox and just leave it in your folder. Right. So it does. So you don't have to have eight million you mean, you emails mean, in your inbox. You mean once you see it on the inbox. In your inbox. Then what do you do? So see where you have it to. This is the folder that it's going to be archived to, right, right there. Right. But if you don't want it in your inbox anymore, you just click the X oh. on the inbox. Yeah. It's yeah. out yeah. of yeah. your yeah. inbox yeah. and it's in the folder. Or you can also. Oh. Okay. Or you can also. This right here is the archive button. Mm -hmm. So, so you you're can, actually archiving right. the email. To you can. That. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can. Or you can hit archive it and it'll get out. Right. Okay. Yeah. The only Good thing that's know. with the only thing folio is it's not doing anything magical or it's just categorizing things so right. that you know somebody said before Jim said before it's like basically a, an advanced search. So instead of typing in Jeanette Coffin, I can go to my folio folder under 105 Lab Import Circle and everything that came from Jeanette Coffin because she's a member of that transaction. Is stored in that in that folio. Right. I, I just uh, I get nervous with all the stuff in my inbox, so well, I didn't realize yeah. that you could actually just okay. Yeah, but I mean that's that's all the more reason, you know. Like I said, as you get better with it, it becomes more of your system. Transaction closes. You send the re request for review. You archive the folder, and it yep. pulls all that stuff out of the rest of the junk. Right, and puts it in a nice, neat little spot for you so you can go back and review it, right. pull up the timeline, see the files that were attached, associated with it, et right. cetera. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's go under the, under the hood a little bit. All right, so this is the, the folio uh, dashboard, what they call the folio dashboard. All right, so you got a couple of different things here. You have timeline templates. All right, this is where you can literally click on here and you can set up either a buyer template, a listing template, or you can create your own template, whatever you want. Call it whatever whatever you want to. Like a but customer, customer you folder? Can, exactly. Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, the exact same thing as like when we go into zip forms and we create buyer packet templates so that when we get a new buyer that wants to write a contract, all you have to do is pull up the template. And it's got all the forms. You can do the exact same thing in here. All right, so... You know, for, for this one, I have, you know, final walkthrough is generally two days before closing date, loan deadline, 21 days um, after the offer is accepted. You know, just, I just put in some, some random dates so that when I assign, uh, you know, I get a buyer, I assign a template to it, a buyer template. I can literally put it in. It's going to ask me my key dates. What are your settlement date? What is the date that you went under contract? And it's going to basically autofill everything else in from there. And the only thing that you have to do is go in and just modify it based on what your contract says. If you, you know, have 12 days for your inspection contingency, then make it 12 days from contract acceptance. If it's 10, make it, make it 10. So much easier than you know, going through and sending you know, an email, you know, these are all the dates when everything is gonna happen or expire, or whatever. Send this, you know, add your dates according to your contract, send it to your buyers, and they have it. They know what's going on and when to expect certain things at different points in the, you know, um, in the transaction. Same thing with your sellers. So that's uh, the templates. That's right here at the top. Then you have your service providers down here. This is where you can literally add in any kind of service provider that you want to that you want to work with. We're you can put in. Now. I got. Oh man, this is so frustrating. Do you have a? Wait, hold on. You're not. Let 
think it's that? Or do you think it's just... Did you hit refresh? Oh. All right, so are we not yet? Do you need to do something with We're still making again? Frederick great again, I think. Yeah, yeah I think it's, give it a minute, remember? When you get to this point, you just gotta be patient. Chrome. Again, no, because it's, it's right connecting switch. to his. There you go. Let's try this. It, re, it kind of refreshed itself. Yep, there you go. All right. Phew. Goodness. Says it's connected. There, there you go. We go. All right. Yay. Good Lord. Okay. All right. So this is your service provider's tab. All right. So you can add any kind of service provider in here that you want to. You can, if it's not something that you see there, you can literally, you know, type. Uh, you can put landscaper in here, attorney, appraiser. You can put other whatever kind you want to, and they'll save in here as a, a you know, a type of vendor for you. Um, and you can also designate whether you always want to add them to a buyer transaction or always provide them to a seller transaction. So if you have somebody that you know is always constantly a part of your like a transaction coordinator, they're always you know assigned to you know whatever. Or if you one person on the team wants to, to use the transaction coordinator and the other person doesn't, you know they work with sellers, the other works with buyers, they always get connect you know um, included in the buyer timeline or seller timeline. So it's like a default. It's basically like a default. Anytime you set up a timeline, they will be included on it if you have this have this check. Like I was saying, my stager gets gets included on all the seller timelines. Um, so I have a couple of inspectors here, stagers, lenders, photographer, stager, title, escrow and title stuff. All right, so that's good. And we have uh, resources underneath. You can literally fill all these different ones in. With whoever you recommend people, you know, people look at USPS, that's a stock one, great schools. I added that in. You can also choose whether or not you want to add it to just buyer timelines, just seller timelines, um, you know, one or the other, or whatever. Uh, you can add a different type of resource here. Same thing as the other place. You can type in if you want something that you don't see. So that's that. And then there's also an area called collaborators. So collaborators is, are, the collaborators are people that um, you always consistently work with. So this would really be where like your transaction coordinators, if they're just going to cover everything that you do or you're working um, in, a, in a team like um, so where everybody's doing everything and wants you know, yeah, keep, keep in, con in connection with each other. You put them as a collaborator instead of a uh, you know, provider. Basically, you set them up as um, they're going to be included on, on everything. And you can li literally choose whether they're a transaction coordinator, a fellow agent, your office admin, assistant, your broker. And Sandy would really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> escrow, <laughs> escrow agent, whatever, lender. And sure okay. whether they can edit at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. And then you can also assign them, you can also assign them um, that they can either 
share and view or whether they can just view or you know kind of set their their permissions view only or can edit and whether you're going to always share them or just maybe folio gives you a suggestion like hey do you want to add this person to this time all right so does anybody have any any questions about any of that kind of the nuts and bolts here uh, this this is just a tab from the program itself that's on your hard drive. When, when I see Folio, that's just a program that's loaded. And, or it's it's on not on your hard drive, it's on the cloud. It's right? on the, cl on the yeah. cloud? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you, are you talking about? No, I'm talking about the tab itself, Folio, like the whole thing that you're in, not the drop downs on the left. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention when you loaded this. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, this is basically the, the, the dashboard. So you can get to this a couple of different ways, but uh, let's see. Not there. So my this is my my kind of go-to. So that's right there on the in that drop down. Okay. And that brings you here to gotcha. you know basically the dashboard. Okay. You can categorize, you can you know just see buyers, you just want to see sellers, just want to see the ones that are actually under contract, you don't want to see the clients, you can do however however you want to. Sure. Um, you can add new smart folders in there, whatever really you want to do. And then your account down here, this tab down here where it says account, this kind of sets up what kind of plan you're on. All right, so there's a couple of, there's three different types of plans. The one is just the individual. It allows you to do up to three transactions, up to three smart, smart folders at the same time. Um, after that, you're not going to be able to you know, really do much of, of anything with it. Um, the other one is up to um, five separate users, which is way too an unlimited number of smart folders, which was way too many for us. So it was actually cheaper for us just to do two individual you know, folio plans, one for me and one for Michelle. And I just covered hers rather than paying for the one with five, you know, five, up to five agents. Um, the cool thing about this is if you have like a, a buyer's agent, let's say you're running a team, you have a buyer's agent, the, the team leader could have the subscription and he can share as many timelines as he wants with whoever he wants. The, the three rule, the three, you know, three folders only pertains to folders that that person creates. So they can view as many folders as they want. They just can't create any more than three folders of their own. And define the smart folder is a transaction. Yeah, it could be a transaction or a client, whatever. A client. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> yep. But you're only allowed. That person's only allowed to create three. So I wanted, you know, like I wanted Michelle to be able to create if she was working with five buyers. I wanted her to create five folders. So for me, it was easier to pay for her individual subscription and my individual subscription rather than pay for the up to five users subscription. Our transaction coordinator doesn't create the folders. I create the folders. So she just needs everything shared to her. Um, so that kind of alleviates you know, the, the necessity for another. You know, She has edit permission, but she doesn't need to be the one physically creating them. I can set them up, put my people in there, and it takes care of itself from there on out. She has access to everything. So if you close the one, you archive, you're done, and you open a new one, does that count as number four, or is it... No. Back to three again. As soon as you archive one, that it, it becomes it an open up, huh? yeah, an open slot. Which is why I said like, you know, for people kind of getting their feet wet for this, this is it really does allow you to, to get a good taste of what the program can do. If you use it just for, you know, one or two clients and just see how it works for you, you know, by the time you know you're done with those two transactions, you know, you can make a good decision on whether or not you want to use it, you know, use it more or not. So, so if you've shared this with somebody, <coughs> say a transaction coordinator, and that person is no longer with you at some point in time, mm -hmm. do they still have access to those folders that they've archived, or how do you get them out of there? No. Under the um, collaborators, you can literally take, just delete them. You can literally take them completely out. And then they would, anything that they saved in their Gmail account, they would no longer have, or they just wouldn't have a folio tab in there? They, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they would still have the folio tab because they've added it to their, to their browser and stuff that was shared with them, they probably would still have that they were like a part of, but if you decided not to share anything more with them and deleted them out of the system completely, they wouldn't have access to um, anything else that you created 
You understand what I'm saying? They would be able to create their own stuff if they were going to do that, you know, with them. Actually, I think if this is like our share drive, mm -hmm. um, they can't see it anymore. They may, it may, it, they may not be able to. I just think if it's, I think if it's categorizing that stuff and archiving it, because the folio <laughs> is specific to the browser, it's not specific to my account or who I allow people. They upload, you know, it into their Google Chrome. So in that case, it's still there, even if I deny access to it, it's still there and still probably categorized in theirs. You know what, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You should test it just for... Yeah, you should, because you yeah. may not want that to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, that's definitely something to consider. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you. But... Does anybody else have, have any chat with those little you know, guys? That yeah. Guys oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why if is you that go, question with the Cheeto guys? Right. If you go, uh, yeah. Let's see. Where's the support? If you allow your true tech And last, but you know what you should do, Kaz? What's that? When you're giving, if you have an employee. You set up the Gmail account and you control the Gmail account. Ooh, right. Yeah. Well, so I do, we do have that. So we do have G Suite. You know. I was going to say, can you use right. G Suite? Yes. Because yeah. if you get rid of them, then it'll spot yeah. off. I mean, then, then don't yeah, work. you can lock them out of the email account. Right. That, that's, 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 that's true. You can lock them completely out of the email account because you have overall super admin privileges on G Suite. Right. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Can I go back to something you said at the very beginning? Sure. I don't, have a, I don't use a Gmail address. I have one, but I don't use it. And I can still set up this through Outlook? You can set it up through Outlook, yep. Okay. Yeah, so I'm if you go... I'm having trouble doing that. If, what's that? I'm having trouble doing that. Giovanni. Maybe you can help me. His name is Giovanni. <laughs> He's very responsive. Yeah, I, so I, I hate Outlook, to be honest with you. I, we had to use it in the military. I absolutely despise it. It's horrible, in my opinion. The last time I used Gmail, <clears throat> one of my clients got like hacked through my Gmail. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, All right. I think it's we're just kind of in that in that time. So but. one of the things um, with your Gmail account, they have added security, Wendy. So when you set up as a Gmail account, you should always have two 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 step um, authentication. Two step authentication. Okay. So if anybody's ever trying to get into your email or anything. You get a you get notification. You can do text, and you've got a you've got an okay at going off of your phone. <clears throat> so but maybe I want to change my security, email address again. The security parameters weren't well, set up. You already have Gmail because you have access to to Drive. I do have Gmail. Right. I just send like all my junk mail there. Yeah. Like if if, if I'm ordering something online and they want to know my email address, right. I give that. That's the one the Russians will hack, right? This is your know. Gmail account. <laughs> this way they don't, now, they don't have do your Outlook. Can I do this because I use Outlook? Yeah. Can I automatically have my Outlook emails forwarded to my Gmail account and use it that way? Yes. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. But, I mean, now you're digging into, like, out, under the hood of Outlook and how to set that up, which is a nightmare. Okay. So, it, you know, my, in my opinion, some people are very good with Outlook, and I am not one of them. What, what I, I mean, what I, what I know from, from this, from Folio, is that it does integrate with Outlook, um, you need to upload it into Google Chrome first, and then that. when you add the account, it says add you know add another account because it's gonna it's gonna pull up your Gmail account first because that's what it's gonna recognize. It's gonna look right. for that, and recognize it. But underneath of that, it's gonna say add another account. That's where you would put in your Microsoft account, okay, and connect it that way. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Ken. It's all good stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. You were going to show us the pricing? What's that? You were going to show oh, yeah, us yeah, the pricing? Oh, yeah, I got plans right here. Sorry. Uh, where'd it go? There you go. There's the, there's the plans. So, obviously, like I said, it's easier for, it was easier for me and Michelle just to do 19, 19 bucks and 19 bucks rather than 62.50, you know, for a month for the year. But, oh, those are annual charges. Well, yeah, that's the per month. Per month. Yeah, oh. that's the annual pricing for if you pay annually, if you bill annually, and that's the oh, pricing nice. if you bill monthly. I see. 
So, but honestly, all you need is the pro. Like you really don't need anything else other than the pro. And you really don't even need that if you're generally working, you know, one to two transactions a month. You're probably fine with even just the just the, the basic free version until you know business starts picking up and and you know you're starting to get stretched out with four and five at a time. You know, it's really only the number of folders is the difference, right? Exactly. Yep. Features are all identical. The features are all identical. It's just how many folders you can set up at, at one time. And like I said, if you're on a team, you can have as many as you want shared with you. You just can't create more than three on the free plan. So you know. My TC doesn't have a plan. She's, she's, she's on the free. But she gets everything that I, and she can do everything that she needs with it. So that's, you know, something to consider also. You know, if somebody has a, a team leader that's interested in this. When you share that with your client, your timeline, do they need to download the Folio software? No. No, they don't. They don't have to have Folio at all. It literally just takes them to a tab that is just the, the timeline. So they literally just see, you know, what is it, uh, and that's the only way to get to it is through that email. The one next to the right. There you go. Yeah. There's a way to pop this out and make it bigger. I think you have it up to over. This is that one. There you go. That's what they see. Good job, Sandy. You're hired. Yes, yeah, so that's what that's what they'll see. So if you guys have any, yeah, if you guys have any questions about, it, I'm, not, I'm by far an expert. I just it, to me this is one of the this is one of the things that um, you know was I thought actually had value to it for for yeah. people, um, and I, I like there's. Kind of two quotes that I was that I was thinking about. I was going to leave you guys on this epic, like bomb dropping <laughs> of knowledge. So just yeah. bear with me. Because every so every great is this the joke that you wouldn't tell at the beginning. Every great. <laughs> Amy's every, still here. Do you want me to turn the camera off? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is good for for my audience here. Uh, so a uh, guy by the name of of James Clear, who's a, a New York Times bestselling author, wrote a, a book called Atomic Habits. Right? And he said that uh, goals are good for planning your progress, but systems are good for actually making progress. Um, and we talk about you know, goals a lot with Darren Hardy, with Brian Buffini, like setting goals up. You, know, you can't achieve a, a target if you can't see it, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, like, and this is something I'm trying to integrate, in reality, if you don't have systems you don't have a business. Like you're literally just running around with your hair on fire at making it look like you have a business. Um, and then one of my favorite ones, I'll read you guys this, this is pretty cool. This is Denzel Washington. Um, dreams without goals are just dreams and ultimately fuel disappointment. Um, have dreams but have goals, life goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, daily goals. I try to give myself a goal every day. Uh, sometimes it's just to not curse somebody out which is we can all relate to, um, but simple, simple goals, but have goals. And understand to achieve those goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. And discipline and consistency comes from, from systems. I mean, consistency is systems, doing things in a systematic fashion. Rinse, wa wa wash, wash, rinse, rinse repeat. repeat. Right. And don't leave your laundry in the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was great. Awesome. <laughs>